Hey, Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mont. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons Today. And today, we have to do it, unfortunately, here on a Monday following just a debacle yesterday for our Atlanta Falcons. It was it was brutal. we got to recap it. I'm going to give my five big points on this and also give a full breakdown uh, on this game as well. Let's just, just, just jump right into it. 32-6. to 6. I mean, there are a lot of things we're going to talk about today on this video about the problems with the Atlanta Falcons. The biggest one for me was the lack of preparedness. I mean, they were so unprepared for this game. And the fact that Arthur Smith, after the game, talked about how it's his fault for not having the team prepared. Like, you had time. Like, this isn't like it's week 15 following a Thursday night game. You had time to prepare for this game completely unprepared. The worst home opening loss in Atlanta Falcons history. Like, it, not just this year or last year in the last five years. In Atlanta Falcons history, the worst home loss. And it wasn't just the fact that the offensive line played bad, because we expected that, right? The defense, they got absolutely manhandled. The defense had very little resistance for the Atlanta Falcons. And offensively, even when Matt Ryan had a little bit of time, Kyle Pitts did nothing. Calvin Ridley did basically nothing. The running game was eh, iffy. We'll talk about that. But this is... This is a bad start. Let's just be honest. And the problem is, as you look at this schedule, you got to start finding wins. Like, are we gearing up to go 17 games where the Atlanta Falcons win three or four? Like, is that what we're really, we're really going to do? Because this will be the third straight year. I know they won eight games two years ago, but they started one and eight. This will be the third straight year of a complete irrelevance by the Falcons. And if that's where we're going, I, I, I'm just out. I'm so done. It's just ridiculous that we're one game in, and that's exactly where Atlanta uh, already is. Okay, I'll jump into my five big takeaways, which, again, are not great because they weren't well, – they're, I think they're good takeaways, but it's bad because we're talking about the Atlanta Falcons today. But first, give me your grade for the Falcons' week one performance. I mean, how do you grade that yesterday? A, B, C, D, or F? I was at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I was at Section 131. A lot of Eagle fans were there, and they had a great time. All the Falcon fans – Terrible time, and there weren't a lot of fucking fans because I guess most of us don't believe they're going to be good this year. And guess what? You were probably right. I give this a D minus. I mean, it may, it's, it may, maybe even an F. This might even be an F. It was that bad. Give me your grade, though, down below in the comments section. First big takeaway. I mean, we... <laughs> What do you want me to say about the offensive line? The offensive line needs help now. They, they, it, it, we, we can't just sit back and wait for Jalen Mayfield to finally turn out to be good because it might not happen this year. I think he's going to be an okay uh, offensive lineman. I think, you know, give him a year, learn this whole system, learn playing at the NFL speed. He's going to eventually be good. But right now, he's not ready. He held up decently in the first quarter, and then just with the penalties, and then in the third and fourth quarter, the sacks, he was getting manhandled. It was only a matter of time. And they needed to go out and make a move. I don't know who it's going to be, whether it's a trade or signing somebody. They need somebody better, at least more of a veteran presence there at left guard because even though the entire offensive line was bad yesterday, most of the sacks and pressure came right up the middle, right where we thought it would, at left guard. They need help right now because even if you don't like Matt Ryan, you have to understand that whether it's Matt Ryan or how they traded for Gardner Minshew, or let's just say they went and got Aaron Rodgers. Like it would not have mattered who was back there. Even Justin Fields would have been running for his life. Now, maybe he's a little more mobile, and that's an argument. We talked about that. But I do think that Ryan had zero time yesterday, and it's all due to the fact this offensive line, for what is the third straight year, already is trash. And it's amazing that we've gone three years now. Even though they addressed the offensive line two years ago, it still is this bad. Like, it just it shocks me that it is absolutely this bad. And Mayfield, he needs, he needs to be replaced. I don't know with who. I don't know where they're going to go, but we need to get a, a, a signing at some point today or tomorrow saying the Falcons have signed somebody because it was, oh boy, it was bad. It was really rough. You guys think the Falcons are going to add a new offensive lineman? Again, I don't know where. I don't know who's going to trade you an offensive lineman after week one, but you think they need to add another offensive lineman type Y down below for yes? And they don't, go down below and type N down below for no. All right, before we go get into number two here, I'm going to rip into Kyle Pitts in just a second. First, though, quick shout-out to our friends at BetUS. If you want to bet against the Falcons coming up when they play the uh, the Bucks on Sunday because most of us aren't picking the Falcons to win that game, do it with our friends at BetUS. Chatsports.com forward slash BetFalcons. The promo code is FALCONS125. Get that 125% deposit bonus whenever you first sign up. You bet on the Falcons. Or better yet, how about we bet on the Braves? Right, at least the Braves are playing well right now. If you're Atlanta-based, you love the Atlanta teams, maybe bet against the Falcons and for the Braves. You do it all with our friends again at BetUS. Chatsports.com forward slash BetFalcons. Okay, number two takeaway. Cal Pitts looked very average. And I know it's game one. I know he had very little in the offseason. He had like one catch in the preseason. I know he's a rookie tight end and rookie tight ends don't play well. But you spent the number four overall draft pick on a tight end when there were quarterbacks. And Penny Sewell was still available. And you could have traded back and gotten a, a cornerback or a pass rusher. You decided to go with this tight end who was sold to us as being the greatest tight end ever and a freak of nature and absolute mismatch. And then your first red zone trip, the red zone I was sitting in front of right there at the 10 yard line, Kyle Pitts did not enter the game. Like literally three straight red zone plays, which you ended in a field goal, Pitts did not enter the game. Why? And then whenever he did enter the game, he looked very average. And Philadelphia didn't do anything special. It was very much man-to-man -man coverage a lot of times with safeties and corners and nickel cornerbacks. Eight targets, four catches for 31 yards. I'm not saying Kyle Pitts is a bust. I'm not saying it was the wrong move to draft Kyle Pitts at number four overall because eventually he might turn into be an absolute beast, an absolute weapon down the field. But in that game, 
selling us the idea that you took with the number four overall draft pick, the highest draft pick you've had since drafting Matt Ryan 14 years ago, and you take a tight end. That was a very, very bad first start, and I think a lot of Falcon fans, at least that I talked to in the stadium and leaving, are kind of to, are starting to feel a little worried that they made a great mistake taking the tight end. Again, it's early. I'm not going to freak out here. I'm going to wait patiently for Kyle Pitts to actually start playing well, but a, 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 a terrible debut. An absolutely abysmal debut, and it was against a defense that I think you could have exposed if you would have, you know, played a little bit better. Uh, rate the debut for Kyle Pitts on a scale from 1 to 10. I give it like a 2. Like, it wasn't good. Give me your rating, though, down below right now in the comments section. I'm at a 2. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm pretty fed up this morning, um, and a big reason for that is that Kyle Pitts looked, looked pretty bad because I was told he was going to be really good, and obviously he was not. Okay, next takeaway. I'm going to give one positive takeaway because you got to find something. I know it's hard, but Cordero Patterson looked good. And I will stand right here in front of you, look you in the eye, and say I was wrong about Cordero Patterson. I said Cordero Patterson's a gimmicky player. He's going to play more wide receiver than running back. They're not going to hand him the football. And then right in front of my eyes in the stadium, they gave him seven carries for 54 yards. He averaged seven and a, and a half to 7.7 .7 yards per carry. He looked good. And I think the Falcons' running game as a whole, at least early on in this football game, played great. And it was like, wow, Arthur Smith, he knows how to scheme runs. I mean, those first two 14-play drive, 15-play drives, a lot of them were runs. Mike Davis played well at the same time. The running game looked good. They had 124 yards rushing. I mean, we had 124 yards rushing. At, we didn't have it last year, maybe in one game. Credit to the running game, Mike Davis and Cordero Patterson. We need to see more of that. And I think they got away from it a little bit too quickly. Maybe Philadelphia had some adjustments after halftime. But at least if you want a positive, the running game was there. And that is something to... I guess hang our hats on because even with 124 yards rushing, he had six total points. So not that much to go ahead and, uh, I don't know, look at. Make sure you guys are subscribed because even though the Falcons are bad, we're going to cover everything going on with the Atlanta Falcons every every week here on the channel. So make sure you guys make sure you are subscribed because hopefully they turn things around and maybe they go out and you know trade for an offensive lineman. If they do, we'll cover it here on this channel. Hit that red button. Help us out. Okay. This is easy to say, but it goes without saying. The pass rush looked really sad on Sunday. Like, really sad. I think we were hoping that maybe this year it would be decent. Not good, because the talent there is not that great. Uh, it would definitely not be great. It was really sad. And you watch the film, and it's even more sad. Grady Jarrett had, had one decent, or maybe, maybe two decent pressures. And I think he played okay yesterday. The interior Eagle offensive line is really good. But Dante Fowler is a complete waste of, it's a waste of a spot. I mean, it literally feels like we have... Um, useless pass rushers who have very little chance of getting to the quarterback. I mean, the fact that they got one sack of Jalen Hurts was impressive. There was a little bit of pressure at times, but really they were building, they were letting them come around the edge and then the Eagle off, off the tackles were moving them around. It was, it's just sad. It's just, it really is sad that it's been a problem for three years. And for three straight years, along with the offensive line, the defensive line has not gotten better and it might have gotten worse because they looked absolutely terrible on Sunday. Final big takeaway. We talked about it in the opener. No excuse to be that unprepared. And I don't know why Arthur Smith admitted to being unprepared in the post-game press conference. Even if he was, I would never have said that because the media, like what I'm doing right now, is going to rip him. How can you be unprepared for week one of the National Football League? Like, I know that you're playing against Philadelphia and there's not a lot of film on Jalen Hurts, but there's still something. How can you be that, like, you, you've had nine, nine months. Like, we, 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 we've known for months you're going to play Philadelphia week one. And yet you come out and lay an absolute goose egg. It was terrible. No touchdowns, two field goals, two stalls in the red zone. And then after those two drives, it was like three and out, three and out, four and out, five and out, turnover run downs, three and out. Just abysmal. It really is sad. And now, guess what? The rest of the NFC South won. Carolina beat, beat the Jets. Sam Darnold looked pretty decent, minus a couple of fumbles. Uh, New Orleans, hello, the, the team I thought would take a big step back, took a step forward without Drew Brees, and they whacked the Green Bay Packers yesterday and five touchdowns from Jameis Winston. And then, of course, Tampa Bay, who you now play next week. How are you going to beat Tampa Bay at all? Right now, they look like the worst team in the division. And maybe it changes, and hopefully it does, and maybe Arthur Smith can get them you know, ready to play next week against the Bucs. All I need to see, and let me just, okay, throw up the uh, Bucks falcons matchup here. All I need to see is competence next week. I don't need to see them win because they, they're they not going to. Let's just be real. Unless Tom Brady has the worst game of his life, they should beat the Falcons, no problem. All I want to see, though, is a competent game plan, decent defensive play, and Matt Ryan have a little bit of time. Is that too much to ask? Because it might be. Oh, man. I hope it's not going to be a long season. I really do. Who do you guys got? Uh, Bucks or Falcons? I think I know. Probably type TB down below for Tampa Bay. If you think Atlanta can pull it off, type ATL. Oh, man, it's rough. We'll have plenty more news and rumor videos coming up in the next couple of days. I just want to jump on here and give you my reactions. I'm, 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 I'm pretty fed up, but, you know, it's a long season, and so we will just wait and hope the Falcons can go ahead and figure things out. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, though. The more subscribers we have, the more videos we can go ahead and produce. All time for today here on Atlanta Falcons today. I'm your host, Thomas Mott. Disappointed, signing off on a Monday for the rest of your day.